This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WFHR Daily News Roundup for locally grown radio 97.5 FM and 1320 AM and West Country 105.5 FM WIRI in Wisconsin Rapids. For WFHR and WIRI News, I'm Melissa Kay. Drug Take Back Day is October 26 this year. Last year, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration collected nearly 600,000 pounds of unneeded medication from almost 5,000 locations nationwide. We know it's not always safe to just throw away or flush medications. Kylie Hunter is an Aspirus Pharmacy resident. She explains how to check. The best way to find out what medications that you can flush down the toilet will be in the package inserts, or they will be told to you by your pharmacist. However, if it doesn't say and it's unclear, you can always go on the CDC website and look at their Do Not Flush list. Drug Take Back Day provides an opportunity for you to safely dispose of unused or expired medications at designated drop box locations. The best way to get involved in Drug Take Back Day is by going through your old medications in your storage cabinets and checking expiration dates or whether or not you take them. Disposing of medications properly helps prevent accidental poisoning, reduces the risk of medication misuse, and protects the environment. This Saturday is the official Drug Take Back event, but you can do it at any time of the year at permanent locations in hospitals and police departments. So you don't have to wait until drug take back day to dispose your medications. In fact, you can do it any day of the year. However, we use drug take back day to create awareness in making sure that we're disposing our medications safely. Wood County is holding several drug take back events on Saturday. From 10 to 2, you can drop off at Marshfield City Hall, Town of Rome Police Department, and Wisconsin Rapids Pick and Save. The Pittsville Police Department is collecting from 9 to noon, and at the Port Edwards Fire Department, you can drop off from 11 to 1 and get some chili at their fundraiser. The Wisconsin Rapids Rafters have a new assistant general manager. Jake Adams has accepted the position for the 2025 season. Adams has been with the Northwoods League for two seasons, working as hospitality intern for the Wilmar Stingers in 2021 and head of marketing and promotion in 2022, again for the Stingers. In the interim, Jake spent time in minor league baseball as the promotions manager of the Charleston River Dogs in 2023, and in 24 he spent the season with the Minnesota United of the MLS as a member of their game presentation team. Jake said he's excited to join the Rafters organization and be a part of the community of Wisconsin Rapids and the surrounding area. Quote, This team, fan base, and community has a lot of potential, and I can't wait to bring an exciting show to our fans. You can follow the Rafters on Facebook on their page, Wisconsin Rapids Rafters Baseball Club. Across the country, kids are facing more mental health challenges than ever before. Now the state superintendent wants to give schools more resources. Savannah Tomei Olson reports. The state superintendent is asking for millions of dollars to go towards students' mental health. Jill Underly announced she's requesting more than $300 million in the next biennial budget to support kids. Six in ten Wisconsin students reported having some sort of mental health challenge over the last year. Under her plan, each district would get an extra $100 per student to spend on mental health programs and infrastructure. Now, that's just one part of the budget request for the Department of Public Instruction for the 2025 through 27 school years. The rest of the proposal will be released next month. This Saturday is your last chance to take a lantern-lit tour around the grounds and buildings of historic Point Boss this season. Their Spirit Walk happens on October 26th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. There's been a troubling rise in fatal crashes and serious injury crashes across our area in recent weeks. These tragedies are preventable. The Marathon County Sheriff's Office reminds us to make traffic safety a priority. They suggest the following key ways to stay safe. Obey the rules of the road. Don't speed. Stay focused. Buckle up. And don't drive impaired. We each have a responsibility to protect lives, and we can do it by driving safely. Itchy, dry skin can get worse as temperatures start to dip and the air dries out. If your dry skin causes persistent discomfort and is a disruption to your daily life, you could be dealing with eczema. 
People with eczema tend to have more inflammation at the skin layer, so it presents with dry, itchy, scaly, rashy skin. Abigail Tao is an MD and dermatologist with Aspirus Health. She said people with eczema experience weakened skin barriers, making skin more susceptible. Fragrance, the yeast on the skin, the bacteria on the skin. The drier it is outside, so the colder, the more those skin cells are breaking apart, the more things are going to get inflamed. Dr. Tao said you should take lukewarm baths or showers, pat dry afterwards, and apply a good moisturizer. My favorite thing is actually just plain petroleum jelly, Vaseline. If that's too greasy, something that you're scooping out of a tub, a cream, is better than a lotion out of a pump bottle or a squeezy bottle. She also said if you have to have eczema, now is a good time. It's actually a pretty exciting time to have eczema, though, because there's a lot more treatment options than there were a few years ago. Nothing beats good dry skin care and topical steroids, but it's best to talk with a dermatologist if your eczema symptoms persist or worsen. Sanford Health and Marshfield Clinic Health System have taken the next step to combine their assets and capabilities to create an integrated health system. They signed an affiliation agreement this month, bringing them one step closer to combining. The letter of intent was signed in July. The two entities will remain separate until the deal closes. The joining of the two nonprofits is expected by the end of the year. Computer glitches and early voters lead to long lines outside of some city clerk's offices and polling places throughout Wisconsin Wednesday. Lisa Hale reports. Over 97,000 people in Wisconsin cast their early in-person absentee ballots the first day they could, resulting in long lines at many polling sites. According to the Wisconsin Elections Commission, the influx of voters caused a slowdown of the WISVOTE computer system that clerks use to print labels placed on the outside of in-person absentee ballots. As of Wednesday, over 475,000 absentee ballots have either been mailed in or cast in person. Find your early in-person voting location at civicmedia.us slash vote. I'm Lisa Hale. The Green Bay City Council makes a united stand of support for the mayor's stance on negotiating a lease extension to the Packers for Lambeau Field. Council President Brian Johnson. It's not in the best interest of the city taxpayers to accept a lease offer from the Packers that pays us less than what both parties have previously agreed to. Originally, the Packers asked for no rent increases over the course of the 20 to 30 year extension, a provision that the mayor says will cost taxpayers 30 million. Just hours after the press conference, the Packers extended another lease offer with rent increases. I'm Melissa Kay for WFHR and WIRI News. The Bucks win on the road. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. NBA, the Bucks won their season opener in Philly, 124 to 109. Did they get a break since the 76ers Paul George and Joel Embiid were both out with knee injuries? Doc Rivers. No, I mean, we didn't have Chris, you know, which is one of our key guys. But we're not worried about the opponent right now, honestly. We're more worried about how we play. The Bucks host the Bulls tomorrow night. College football, the Badgers host number three ranked Penn State Saturday night. Luke Fickle on facing that tough Nittany Lions defensive front. They're going to move all around. They've got really, really good athletes. I think, obviously, that's where they're, the strength of their team is. NFL, Matt LaFleur inviting his close friend and former Jets head coach Robert Sala to practice. Will Sala be joining the coaching staff? It's it's pretty fluid. You know, I think it's important for him to spend time, obviously, with his family. So he's staying through Thursday and going back on Friday. The Packers play the Jaguars in Jacksonville Sunday. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. On this last weekend before Halloween, you'll have several good thrillers to choose from, including a couple new releases. Let's start with Conclave, a murder mystery set in the Vatican, when the church hierarchy gathers to select the new pope. The film stars Ralph Fiennes and is pulling a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's rated PG. I didn't think they made PG films anymore. And if you're in the mood for a sci-fi Marvel film, check out Venom, The Last Dance, starring Tom Hardy. This is the final film in the Venom trilogy, but beware, it has not been made available to critics before opening night. There are also a host of scary flicks still in the theaters, including Smile 2, Terrifier 3, and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. And if you're lucky enough to live in a city showing the animated Memoir of a Snail, it might be worth a look. Although animated, it is rated R and is considered an Oscar contender for Best Animated Feature. Memoir of a Snail is currently pulling a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's go to the movies. 
Stephen King's novel Carrie is about to hit the little screen. Prime Video has announced that Mike Flanagan will turn King's novel into an eight-episode series. Flanagan has worked on other King stories, including Dr. Sleep, which was the sequel to The Shining. Carrie is the novel that put King on the map back in 1974. It was turned into a feature film in 1976. It's a great time of year to check out anything by Stephen King. In addition to horror films, there have been a slew of animated films released this year that impressed both critics and theater owners. IndieWire just released its Oscar prediction for Best Animated Feature, and Pixar Disney's Inside Out 2 is the odds-on favorite for Best Picture. The film made $1.6 billion worldwide. It is the highest-grossing animation film of all time. Other contenders include DreamWorks' The Wild Robot and Sideshow's Flow. Great recommendations for this weekend if you're done with the scares. Actress Zoe Saldana takes her craft seriously. How seriously? She told Variety that she wanted to go back and reshoot Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame because she says now she totally understands her character, Gamora's arc, better. She says she knows it can't happen, but she wishes she could because now she has a better grasp on what directors the Russo brothers had in mind. Ouch. I love Zoe Saldana, but maybe you do a little more homework next time before you hit the screen for two multi-million dollar films. Saldana played the same role in the Guardians of the Galaxy films as well. Netflix has announced there will be a season two of the A24 show Beef. The Hollywood Reporter says season two will focus on a young couple who witnesses a fight between their boss and his wife and will star the outstanding Carey Mulligan and Oscar Isaacson. Season one, starring Stephen Yun and Ali Wong, took home eight Emmys. Isaacson and Mulligan worked together previously in the Coen Brothers film Inside Lewin Davis. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy and breezy today with clouds increasing this afternoon and then a chance of showers or even an isolated thunder shower by late this afternoon into this evening. Our high today in the mid-60s. Tonight will clear after midnight with a low in the mid-40s. Tomorrow, sunshine with a high in the upper 50s to low 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 30. That's your WFHR and WIRI Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WFHR.com or Wiss Country. That's W-I-S Country dot com. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 